Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I have the opportunity to work on a Shimano reel. This is one that Sammy has sent in. This is the Dakota 500 HG line counter, and uh, Sammy sent me about 20 reels. I'm going to do a preview of those reels that he had sent in. Uh, they're all in very nice condition. He's asked me to clean these up. He uh, has a boat. He rides it out of uh, San Francisco Bay, and... Uh, He's got a lot of interesting reels that will become subjects of videos. So if you like these kinds of videos, I would encourage you to subscribe. If you do subscribe, please hit that notification button. That way uh, you'll see the reels that I'm posting and uh, you'll be able to take a look and see if that's one that would interest you in, uh, in viewing. So uh, the notification buttons help everybody and I hope you take advantage of that. Well, this is the Shimano Dakota. It's a very nice reel, and we start by taking off the exterior pieces and parts. So you notice that I did take down the, the cap clip and the little tie-down screw. Next, we're going to use an 11 millimeter cap uh, nut. Uh, we're going to use the wrench on it. So we'll take that off. And as I take my pieces and parts off, I like to put them into a parts tray. That way, uh, you'll know where they are when it comes time to reinstall. All right, all of this stuff is going to spring up now. We're going to remove the handle, and then this is going to come up because it's sitting on a spring. So just be careful as you're disassembling the reel, making sure that uh, uh, you keep hold of everything. Don't lose any of the pieces and parts. You'll see the spring that was pushing that up is next. And this is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way, because if you lose your train of thought, if you... Uh, have to step away from the reel if you're trying to figure out how a piece goes back in and you lost your orientation. Pictures will help. So use a stationary camera, use a cell phone, and do video if you like. And uh, regardless, if you take the pictures, they are worth a thousand words later trying to find them. There's four side plate screws that are going to be removed to take the side plate cover off. Always look in the back. Sometimes some of these reels have a uh, a lower screw from that back side, so just uh, just check it out. I'm just going to loosen these a bit, and then I'm going to switch over to my Phillips head screwdriver. But there's four screws here. It's a very nice reel. Uh, the Shimano's in this area, the Dakotas and the Tyronos and the Calcutta's and all of those, they, they're round, round bait casting reels. are very well made and a good reputation. Well, I'm taking those four side plate screws out. I'm putting them into my parts tray, but I'm also checking to make sure that the screws are all the same length. If they're not, you want to mark the hole where the, uh, the short one or the longer one goes. There's only two more left here. So line counter reels are popular with folks that troll. They like to know how much line they have out. Also those that... Uh, do deep drop fishing would like to know that as well. Uh, one of the uh, old timers tricks, I guess, or the way I learned to do it before line counters was that you would uh, hand pull out the line and you would count the number of pulls that you had taken before you got a strike. And then you know the zone where in the water column the fish are. And well, you come back uh, next time uh, after you reel in, you just go back out to that uh, number of pulls and you should be in the zone. All right, I got three out. The fourth one will come out when I remove the case. And we'll do that right now. We're going to pull up on that to remove the case. And before I go too much further, I want to get that screw out. And all of those screws are the same length. Well, actually, that last one is just a little bit shorter. So I'm going to separate that. So the one on the back side there is a little bit shorter. When you go to service the reel, you want to make sure that you clean the reel of the old creases, that you inspect the pieces and parts, and that you uh, re-lube and um, overall be certain that uh, all the necessary cleaning in that is done before you uh, reassemble. All right, this is the inside of the plate. It's, it's pretty straightforward. This should be a ball bearing here, so we're going to oil that. I'm also going to put a little bit of oil onto the little tri uh, free spool release mechanism. That's how this works. If you were watching this video because you took the reel apart and you took the spring out and you're wondering how it goes, notice that there's a little hole on the side here that one point anchors into. The other one has a right turn up 
which goes into that, uh, that little toggle there, or eccentric. Here's the business side of the reel. You'll notice a couple of things on here. We have these two yoke springs. So they're going into my parts tray right away so that they don't shoot off. We've got a collar here or a gear sleeve spacer, call it what you will. It's got two points on the one side and it's flat on the other. So when you go to reinstall, the two points go down. That should enable us to remove the main gear. Sometimes these get a little sticky, so I'm going to take the top two off first. Behind here is a uh, anti-reverse dog that's the old finger style dog. So that's going to come up. Just make sure that you're aware of that. And actually this one came out on a post. That post is removable. I'm going to put that post right back into the case so that I don't lose that. The other pieces can go into the tray. And what we're going to do here, we're just going to clean these off. Now these are a form of a Carbon Tex drag washer. These have a lot of oil on them. They don't need to be oiled, but they should be cleaned. And that's what we're going to do here. The small one goes up top. We'll go reinstall these in a moment. This is your back end. Make sure when you put this click ratchet in that that stud on the click ratchet faces down. That's going to, to enable you to auto trip the free spool back into gear. I'll wipe down the back of the main gear. It's a big main gear. I don't know the exact ratio on this, but it's probably five or six to one. Now we're just going to remove the other pieces here. The grease is kind of holding all of this in. Be careful with the drag washers. You really don't want to break them. These are uh, pretty hard washers in the Shimano's. All right, you want to clean it to make sure it's free of grease and debris. You want to check all of the teeth on the main gear to make sure that they're not chipped or cracked or broken in some other way. Wipe down the, the dry washer, and then you can go ahead and put that back in. Next up on that one, you're going to find that there's a round washer with flat sides internally. That's called a keyed washer. That would go next. And a lot of grease and a lot of oil on this. You can see how it's coming off of my paper towel. Second of the drag washers then. The top one here has the two points on the outside. This is called an eared washer and they're bent down. They face down when you go to reinstall the stack. Then we have the smaller one and we have the one that's got the uh, slots for that gear sleeve spacer above. I'm just going to take those off to the side for a moment. We still have to grease that, but that's the setup for this one. We're going to remove the yoke now. The yoke is called that because, well, it kind of looks like the yoke on a, the old oxen. Notice on the back side, there's two separate sides to this. The back side has a slanted or an angle coming off of that, uh, that little shoulder there. That's going to face inward. And speaking of inward, this is the inward side of the uh, pinion gear, and this is the external. We're going to check the same thing here. We want to make sure all those teeth are nice and uniform, that they're not clogged with grease or anything. And you can use a small hard brush. You can use a toothbrush or, or anything like that to um, uh, clean that up. I'm just going to set that aside as well. Put that in my parts tray so I don't knock it around. Next up, this is probably the only part where it actually gets a little fun or funky. We need to take this side plate off here to access the spool. And um, you need to watch this little spring here when you do that. I believe we can get away with just doing the, the four screws to remove that. We'll find out. But be aware of that spring. You don't want to lose that in the process. I'm going to go to a micro driver to do that. You can take the whole jack assembly off if you like. I don't find it necessary unless there's a bunch of dried grease behind there and this reel is very clear. I'm going to take the four screws out and we'll see if we can do it that way. I don't know why Shimano designed this where you can't remove the spool easily, but they did. Same thing happens on the back. You have a back plate cover over there as well. So 
this is the third one. The only one I'm going to have a question about, there's another one on the other side here. Well, it looks like we're going to have to remove that spring and the, uh, the jack. So I'm going to grab a, a small uh, pliers. And very carefully hold my hand on it because I don't want to lose this spring. Is detached. We're going to just back this off a little bit. And we should be able to lift this up and out. That's your jack, and here's your spring. That spring is going right into the parts tray so that I don't lose it. And that's probably a good thing that I took it off. There's a little bit of grease back here. We'll go clean that up as well. All right, there's only one other piece that needs to be done on this side then, and that is the C clip that's holding on our. Um, line guide that needs to come off as well. Again, this is another one that's prone to shoot, so be careful as you go to remove this. Well, if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're a little stuck, maybe you just have a question about the mechanics of a particular reel or something, if you want to leave that in the, in the comments section, I will try to answer those questions for you. This one's this being a little stubborn here. Probably take it off camera here. Okay, that's your little C-clip that we were working on. That goes into my tray so I don't lose that. And we have the little collar piece. And now this whole side plate should come off. Oh, still got one more screw here. All right, so all four of those screws are the same. They're going to go in the corner of my tray here. And we should be able to pull up and out on this now. That'll give us access to the spool. And it gives us access to the bearing in the back. Now all of those gears in the back are plastic, so you don't need to do anything with them. So all you need to do then is just oil that bearing back there and then clean the back of the spool. You have some residual dirt in here. Put a little bit of grease onto the spool itself. And it's going to seat into the main gear. Use fishing reel grease, please. And we can go ahead and grab that and put that right back in. You don't need to grease or oil or anything with the um, line counter mechanical device but grease and oil is just going to screw it up. All right, see that we have a, a bearing on this side we're going to oil as well. Again please use the fishing reel grease for that. And then we're back here with this setup of reinstalling. Before we do that I just want to check sometimes we have a bearing back here sometimes it's a bushing. I'm just going to flood the area with oil. There is a C-clip you can take off but if you just kind of flood it with oil and, and place it in like that, generally speaking, you're, you're going to be fine. All right, let's, uh, let's take this and put that back together. You want to line up your pieces with the screw holes. Press in so that you once you've snapped that into place, go ahead and get your screws. Set them in here. Now those go in those little holes. 
be aware there's also four holes here that if you're not careful you might wind up putting the screws in there and they don't belong in there. Those are the external case screws. Easy enough to confuse. So we're basically going to start the reassembly process now. We've oiled in the bearings in the back. We've cleaned up all of the pieces. We've inspected them to make sure that they're not broken, chipped, cracked, or in any other regard. And now it's time to kind of put the reel back together again. Next up, then, we're going to take this metal shield. That goes with your line guide. And then we have that little collar. You'll notice there's a tab on the collar. So you want to line that up seat that properly and now of course you want to put that c-clip back in and the way to do that you have to pull hold the, this down pull on the line guide itself and then get your clip to go ahead and put back in now this is always a, a little interesting one you got to watch them they can shoot pretty easily. And the best way to usually get this on is to rotate it to where you can grab it with the pliers and not bump into a, uh, an indentation. So we're going to try it like this. This should be it. Just like that. And you're set. So what have we done so far? We removed the plate and we've oiled the bearings, taken out the spool, made sure it's clean, oiled the back side of this, didn't oil or touch the, the line counter, reinstalled the plate and the C-clip. And we're just checking to make sure our line guide is working now before we go any further. Sometimes you can bind that and uh, have a little bit of a problem there. Okay, we have our yoke. The yoke has the two uh, bumps that are going to pull the pinion gear away from the spool. You want to get some grease onto the back of that. And we have that little spring you got to be very careful about. And I'm thinking the best way to do this is probably to remove this one little tie down screw here. And I haven't done this one much. Go ahead and put the one side in. That goes in that little hole. And then we're going to want to mate the other hole here. Okay, set it, push it down, hold the yoke. We'll get that tie down screw here. And that will hold everything in place. All right, in good shape with that now. We can actually move this back up. That's the best way to reinstall. We're going to take our pinion gear next. Again, we've cleaned and inspected. We have the yoke. I want to make sure we get a fresh coat of grease onto the teeth of the pinion gear and that little shoulder there. We do the same thing here with the yoke. Remember, one side's got the angled section right here that belongs to the side with the spool gear. And then this assembly will go in right over the top. We can actually put a little bit of grease onto the spool shaft at this point either. Okay, that'll go in like that. And then when you're putting this in, make sure you turn it so that you get this all the way to the back and you have the arm or the uh, cross hatch on the spool intersecting with the gear itself. <clears throat> Next up, we can take that 
drag stack that we had rebuilt, cleaned up. Get a good amount of grease onto the teeth on this. And you don't have to get it on every tooth because the, the pinion gear's got grease on it. This will get grease on it. They're different ratios, so one will spread it over the other. Look for the flat side of your gear sleeve. Well, we're going to knock most of them out anyway, but that's okay. I got ahead of myself there. You want your click washer, click ratchet, and you want your anti-reverse before you do that. This is how your anti-reverse goes. Remember, this is the downside. Anti-reverse goes this way. You have your stud for your anti-reverse here, so let's go ahead and load that up. Make sure that you get the anti-reverse in. You're probably going to have to hold the gear shaft to make sure that you're square onto the seating of this. Okay, I'm back. I just had to take a phone call. I've taken my glove off, for those of you paying attention here. And I will just continue. So once you've seated that and you've seated your anti-reverse, go ahead and put your backing washer for your main gear. Main gear goes next. Make sure that you mesh that with the pinion gear. Remember, this is the one with the downsided ears, so make sure that they face inward. The top match. And then we have our set with the piece for the gear sleeve. And we can grab our gear sleeve, which has the two tags. And then you want to mesh the, the gear sleeve so that it is flush to the bottom there. We have two spring washers now. Those go over the shafts of the pinion gear. And now we can take the side plate and go ahead and install that. Let's just work it over the top. Make sure that this gets that nice snap that's controlling the, the free spool eccentric. eccentric. And if you don't, uh, if you have any binding in the case, make sure that you go back and check for it because chances are the stud on the release lever is not matching with the hole or the slide in that uh, free spool uh, jack. All right, we're just going to put these in kind of opposite so that we keep the tension on the case. And then we can button up the reel and give it a test. Get that out of my way. As I mentioned, the screws were all pretty much the same. There was one that came out of here that was just a little bit shorter. You can see how it's a more narrow frame here than it is on the other corners. So if you had any question about where the short one went, it goes in the front on that side, front lower. One more. So you can see it's a quality reel. It's got a well-deserved reputation. All right, let's put the best, the rest of it on here. Making sure that that star is she seated in there properly. We have two bell washers. They're kind of, they look bent. Don't try to straighten them out. Those go on first. There's no right or wrong way to put them on. They do control the sensitivity of the um, shaft. And actually, I missed one there. The first one goes in. The cap washer first. And we put that one on and we bring our this is your adjuster screw controlled by the star adjuster just make sure you got it started right this one's not you got to make sure that you don't cross thread this one's not cooperating there we go no nope. no we don't go there we are. 
take your time, be patient with those. If you cross strip them, you've got a problem. A fellow I know has cross stripped one on a very expensive Shimano reel and the, the shaft was no longer available. That came as quite a surprise. All right, spring goes next. You can see the recess. So if you put that nut on, you make sure that the recess is facing up. Next, you want to take your star adjuster, load it up, push it down, turn it so that you get the full exposure of that stud. Go ahead and put your, there's a washer that points behind there, get that on. Get the handle on. This is all kind of a hand strength thing because, well, you got to hold that until you get this nut cap going. Same thing, don't cross strip your nut cap. And then you need that uh, 11 millimeter wrench. Tighten down your drag at this point. And then we just have the cap nut and screw. They're pretty good there, lined right up. Here's your screw. And we'll just be ready for a test. I mean, mean small screws, those of you who watch the channel, don't play well together, and we're not playing well here, are we? There's one more thing I want to do before I complete this, and that's to oil your line guide pole and worm. So let's do that. You have a cap here. Let's remove the cap. Be careful with these, they're plastic caps, they do tend to break. I want to get that pole out first, I want to check the shoulders of that. I want to make sure that the shoulders are clean and that the points are in good condition and that they're uh, symmetrical. That you have the same point on both sides. When you do that, you're probably not going to seat it right the first time, so hold pressure on that. Just turn the Turn your uh, handle until you see that there's a recess there and that the pole's not riding above that shoulder in the cap. You can go ahead and put this back on. Go ahead and again, just like the other one, you don't want to cross strip. I have it on the wrong side of the reel for being right handed. not turning easily you've probably got a cross strip be careful about it all right and then oil your worm gear drive let's give it a test it's running nice and fast that's a high speed reel that's for sure it says 6.3 to 1 we saw the difference in that main gear let's make sure that our free spool is working now the free spool you have that click mechanism so you can turn it it will trip back by itself like uh, some bait casters, or you're certainly welcome to just flip it back by itself. Either way, make sure that that's on. Test your drag washers. They're holding nice and tight. And then for storage, back your drag washers off. You don't want to compress them. Uh, you want to keep them nice and fresh. Well, that's it. That's your Shimano Takoda 500 HG line counter. And that's how you take it apart and service it and keep it running for the next season. I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.